Hey guys, it's JP with Retronyms, and I'm here in a nice rainy day in San Francisco. Good day to be uh, messing around with tabletop. So um, I want to show a couple more devices in tabletop, really focus on the signal and a couple techniques uh, that I like to use with it. Um, and this, this really follows up on uh, Lockheed's resampling demo from a couple weeks ago, because this is like another uh, resampling technique just using third-party apps for audio source. So Zignal is one of two interapp audio devices we have in Tabletop, uh, the Mastermind and the Zignal. And the Mastermind is an interapp controller. It sends MIDI, kind of virtual MIDI signals to control uh, third-party apps, whereas Zignal focuses on recording loops from third-party apps. And it uh, uh, lets you really take advantage of the custom interface and sort of the intended you know, best experience of, of using one of these uh, apps. So this all uses Apple's interapp audio standard. Uh, so it can record audio from any supported, uh, any, any third party app that supports interapp audio. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a signal to the table here and it uh, routes up automatically for us. Um, so if we take a look at it, it's really simple. It's one of these great devices that is super simple, uh, but has like a lot of power just in terms of its flexibility. Um, so this main area here kind of is where the looping audio appears and then there's two controls. There's an edit button with some basic options in it and uh, an app selector. So I'm going to go ahead and select an app. And these are kind of all the sort of instruments and generators I have installed right now. Um, and if you go ahead and tap one of these, it actually launches it for you in the background so you don't have to have it open or anything ahead of time. Uh, so now Magellan, uh, Yonak Magellan's loaded up. It's a nice synth. Um, and I can tap it to scoot over. And you can sort of see there's a tabletop uh, transport uh, and, and recorder here. So I can record tabletop and kind of control some of its playback. And anything I play on Magellan is now going to be routed through tabletop's audio signal chain. So it's going to be going through this mixer and then through this um, reverb and compressor finally. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and, and record something. Make sure the click track's on. So, uh, yeah, let's just record a little bit of audio into this thing. So I hit record here. So we got a couple loops of audio. You can sort of see I have um, Table, well, sort of signal 101 here, I've got a loop. So I'm using a really dense uh, preset here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show one of my favorite techniques with signal, or at least one technique you can use just to give an idea of its flexibility. I'm actually gonna design a little kind of almost on-screen instrument here using a uh, drum derainger to gate the signal uh, from signal. So first I'm gonna add an expander. And if you don't know much uh, about uh, the sort of dynamics controls from compression and expansion, our user guide has a pretty good description. But basically expanders uh, increase the dynamic range of your signal. Um, but today we're gonna be taking advantage of its sidechain which lets you uh, kind of gate the signal and control it with a, a separate uh, signal from, from the one you're affecting. So I'm going to take the drum derainger, now that we have the expander wired up, and I'm going to drop it on here and then custom route it from the output of the drum derainger to the side chain of the expander. So now the drum derainger signal is going to be controlling the signal. So in other words, we can have this little instrument here that we've kind of created that like where we have a gate effect for the audio here. So drum derangers left to right, it kind of marches along as the audio marches along. And each time we add a little bit of audio in the drum derainger, we won't be hearing the kick from the drum derainger. Instead, we'll be hearing the uh, signal. First, I'm gonna kind of set up some basic, I'm just gonna turn the attack and release way down. I won't get into all the parameters of this uh, thing today, but. Okay, so now we have this ready. You can hear it's not gonna be making any sound yet, but if I add a, a couple bits to the pattern here, we'll be able to set down a pattern.
And you can use the um, length and level, those both since they affect kind of the audio going into the sidechain, you can use both of those to sort of create more variation. So I'm going to turn the length down on some of these. And even maybe play with the level a little just to get some movement. And further, you can use the threshold and ratio and in, in the attack and release, basically all the parameters of the expander to kind of change it from a real hard gate into sort of more of a pulsing sound. I'll just kind of play with these. You can sort of see what they do. Let's bring the drums up a little bit more in the mix here. Kind of tuned up the uh, mix a little bit. I'm going to add one more effect to sort of add some more movement to this. Um, I'm going to throw in a, an EQ and kind of automate it a bit. So we've got a little bit of a beat going here. Um, and you know, obviously, like I just threw in, the, gated off the first thing I got out of the Magellan. Uh, you can kind of keep doing that and playing with it, overdub more onto it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add uh, a bass line to this. Uh, so I'm going to set up the same, the same setup I did uh, for this first instrument, but put it in more of a playable state across a bunch of loops. Uh, so let's do that real quick. So just to run through this again, I'm going to uh, drop a signal on here. Then I'm going to add uh, an expander. Then I'm going to add a, a drum deranger and custom route the drum deranger to the side chain. And I like to put those on the same screen. So for this one, I'm going to try to create a, a kind of live play interface. Uh, so I'm going to throw just a ton of uh, uh, gate signals across the bottom here. Um, I'm going to sort of set them to a low length, but then add a couple long notes um, just to kind of give it some, some movement. And I'll kind of do the same thing with level. And again, this is using the, the intensity of the sidechain signal um, to affect the, the expansion of the signal. So if you do any kind of variation to that intensity, uh, to the amplitude of the signal, will affect the, the kind of gating effect. So I'm going to kind of add some, some level sort of movement in here. Um, and if you don't know much about the drum deranger, maybe we'll do a, 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 another video on that as well. I don't know. Let, let us know if you, if you kind of want to know more about a uh, deeper dive into the, into the drum deranger. OK. so. Um, now we've got, we've got a setup here with, with uh, a couple patterns and a bunch of uh, uh, T101 loops. Uh, so now I'm going to try to tra create a bass line across this. So this has our, our sort of uh, Magellan hook across the whole thing. So I'm going to throw in, um, let's use iMini for this. iMini is a tabletop ready app 
but it also supports inter-app audio, so you kind of use it either way. Um, so I'll hop over to iMini. And right now, as I said before, anything that iMini plays, kind of like the same setup with Magellan, is going to go through the audio signal chain of tabletop. So now uh, that gating pad that I created, uh, or the gating effect I created with the drum derringer is going to be applied to this. So I go ahead and play back the tabletop track here. Okay, so that's sounding pretty cool. Um, why don't we go ahead and try to record that? So I'll set us up at the beginning of the loop here. Um, turn off looping and uh, pop over. So now we're going to use a signal to, instead of just recording a loop, tabletops running along through all the triggerator blocks and we're just going to record uh, the whole bass line as I play it right into that signal across each block. I'll show you how this works. So I'm going to this time record on tabletop. Oh wait, before I do that, let me, let me turn on the click track just so I can get the count in. Okay, so now you can see we have all the loops across all the triggerator blocks. So you can see the audio changing out here. Okay, so I'm having a lot of fun with this, you can tell, but uh, that's the basic gist of this particular technique with Signal, and there's tons more, obviously. So um, I would encourage people to explore and go out and find ways to play with Signal. And again, also check out Lockie's resampling demo. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. Uh, I know, by the way, I promised some big IMPC news that is still coming. I hope to announce it here as soon as I can. So in the meantime, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos and um, we'll make more. So thanks a lot guys. So this is JP. I'm gonna demo some uh, techno. It's gonna be great.